party, okay? Step two, set a date. Simple, right? Set a date. Just make it happen, right? I don't want you to think too much about this. You don't need, you know, weeks and months to plan for this. Set a date. Make it happen because the minute you put it on paper, then you know that you've got to put all the place, all the things in place to make this happen, happen right? So set a date. Um, make that. I will recommend if you are doing a virtual party, Evening times are the best participation times for you to get the most amount of participation. So if you do evening times, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays are the best times. Mondays are horrible times for people because obviously it's the beginning of the week. Saturday mornings are also another good time for you to do a um, virtual event, webinar um, type of thing so that you can get the maximum amount of participation that you can get. So I would set a date, make it for the evening time, you know, something like this, since it's going to be an interactive talking type of thing, I would plan for at least 90 minutes, <clears throat> 90 minutes to two hours, because it's going to be a lot of downtime, cutting, showing, talking through this. So it's not a training class like what I do. So I try to keep my classes, you know, pretty short and sweet, but you know, this is an interactive type of event. So you want to plan for about 90 to two hours, uh, 90 minutes to um, 120 minutes of time when you plan for this. So set a date, a date and a time. Tuesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays are best times if you're doing a virtual event. Saturday mornings are also great times to get maximum participation just because of people's schedules or what have you. Um, help a marketing and a communication plan. Make sure that you've got a plan in place, not one time. So I always tell people, you know, people will tell me, oh, well, I, I did a post. I did one post and I didn't get any response. Or I sent out one email and no one responded to me and nobody joined my event. Emails post seven touches. I want you to think of the magic seven. It takes seven times for people to see you when you have a message to say, right? To know you, to even see that you exist, right? People are very busy. Uh, social media posts, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they all have a shelf life, right? So you may just have been missed in the feed. So your marketing needs to have multiple touch points and there are multiple different ways that you touch people, right? So if you're doing a social post, you should plan for, let's say you're going to do a um, vision party in two weeks, right? You should plan for probably five posts at different times over that two week period, five to 10 posts over that two week period so that people don't miss it, right? You should do emails. You should do three to five emails in a sequence um, so that people get it and it doesn't get missed, right? You should do three to five videos about the topic, right? So it's not one time and hit it. It's multiple times, right? You got to hit people multiple times with the message and the invitation. It's not just a one-time hit. So I really want to stress that, that when you have an event and you're marketing a particular item, it's not just one time. You want to do it multiple times and you want to plan that out to make sure that you've got enough visibility on your event so that you get the attendance that you want. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. That's probably one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they don't market it enough. They don't sing it enough. They don't say it enough. They they think that they're being redundant and that, yeah, I mean, until the time that you get sick of saying it, you probably still haven't said it enough, right? So it needs to be said multiple times that you're having an event. You need to let people know until you're probably sick to death of saying it, okay?